In this video, we'll be creating an image of a cap and a funny cap design using a free version of Flux AI, and then we're going to comp them together in PhotoP for the finished result. Okay, so we're going to start off by going to our Desgo plugin, which is at the bottom here. Now, if you haven't watched the previous video on how to get this plugin that I put up, I'll put a link to that in the description, but I'll just show you very quickly. In your main PhotoP window, you should go to the window menu, go to plugins, and then somewhere along the top, you'll see this one saying Desgo text to image. Click that, click the install button. Obviously it's uninstall because I've already got it. And then you just click this little um, cross in the top right corner here, just to exit back out to the main photo P window. And you'll see the icon at the bottom somewhere on your, um, somewhere on your tool sort of bar here on the right hand side. So I'm going to go down and cl click on that. And again, if you want some more information on exactly what I'm doing here, so this isn't a tutorial on how to use this. It's all in that separate video that I've done and I'll link to that in the description. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you the exact prompt and the seed values that I used to create the original, which I used in the thumbnail. And I'm going to paste them in here. So the prompt is a product photo of a white baseball cap on a rustic wooden surface. Everything else are left as default. Went to more options here, and this is where I can paste the seed number in. So if I've entered the prompt correctly and the seed I've entered correctly, when I click run, it should generate exactly the same image of the cap that I'd used previously when I sort of was practicing this video, just, just sort of running through the video, and it has. So now I'm going to click download, and I'll download that to my local folder. And it's worth noting that even if you get one letter different in the prompt, or if you use uppercase when previously you used lowercase, even if you got the seed, it will give you a very slight different image. So you have to really copy and paste when you're using, when you want to recall an image exactly. So anyway, we've got that. Let's go on to the actual design that we want to put onto the cap. So I'm going to paste this back in so I don't make any mistakes. So I did distressed vintage logo design suitable for a hat of a cat playing electric guitar with the words shredded. Now I did about three variations of this, I think before I got one that um, I liked three or four, but it didn't take long at all. It only took me like a minute or so. So again, I'm going to paste the seed number I've just got written down in a text document just to make sure I generate the same image so you can follow along with me. And I'll put all these in the description box, by the way, the prompts and the seed number so you can copy and paste exactly yourself and hopefully you'll get identical results to mine. So there we go. And this is all real time, by the way, I've not edited that to make it quick or anything. That's how quick that particular one was to run. So I'm going to download that now and then I'm going to load both images up and I'll join you again in a second. Okay. So I've got the image of the cap loaded and in a separate document, I've already got the image of the, the actual design loaded. So the first thing I want to do is just cut out this, this design to actually bring it into the hat. Now what I decided to do for this one is do like this, this is kind of rustics thing, which I saw for a t-shirt that someone did a while ago and it was quite nice. And it was almost like using straight lines. So I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool here to sort of do a really rough cut of an outline around the object. And what and the version I saw was, I think it was for a t-shirt doesn't matter and it ended up being almost like a rubber silicon um slightly 3d material stuck onto the t-shirt itself in this with this big chunky kind of outline around it and it just gave it like a, a nice 3d look so that's that's something i'm gonna do but obviously you can do whatever you want if you if you're making a if you're making a logo there is a there is an option in the plugin to use a transparent background, but it often it just does a really bad result. So if you're doing something that you specifically want to cut out, it's kind of sometimes useful to prompt to do it on a green background, almost like a fake green screen, and then you can, you know, easily remove the green color. But for this, I'm just going to create that chunky outline. I'm going to press Control or Command C to copy that, and the same Control or Command V to paste it in here. Now, before I do anything else. I'm going to make that smart object so I don't mess it up when I start doing the um, adjustments. I'm going to right click on the layer and convert to smart object. Now I'm going to just shrink this down. Oh, let me to do that. Let me move this back here. Zoom in a little bit. 
Now I need to adjust this because it's obviously the perspective is not is not matching the cap. The cap, the front, the front of the cap's kind of a bit of a tilted perspective compared to this. So I'm going to right click on this and go distort. I just find this way is easier. You can use the other tools like perspective and you can warp it and things like that. But for basic, just shifting the perspective, I like to use distort because then you can kind of almost follow what you what you're perceiving as the front of the cap in like a flat space with the shape of the outline here if that makes any sense so i'm just going to do this again it doesn't need to be exact something like that and then what i want to do as well is warp it so i've distorted it to get it roughly in the right face in the right direction the right perspective now i'm just going to warp it and because the cap's obviously rounded and it sort of bends over and curves over a bit at the top so i'm going to take some of these some of these points i'm just going to drag them again this is not an exact science I'm just going to drag them to, you know, maybe just push them a little bit towards the curve of or how the hat is, how the hat is kind of formed. And don't spend too much time on this because it's quite a low res image anyway. Um, I do, I will upscale with Topaz Gigapixel and you'll probably see that in the intro to this video on the screen so you can see it in high resolution. But for this, I'm just doing it in the native resolution of the generations, which on this one was 1024 by 1024. So I'm going to press OK, hit the enter button. So happy with the shape and how that looks. There's a few more things I want to do to this now to just make it look a little bit more um, realistic. One of those is I'm going to address how sharp or blurry it is. The second thing I'm going to address is the overall tone and, and the sort of the white level of it and how bright it is and the third one i'm going to address is actually giving it a little bit of a 3d look because it's supposed to be almost like a cutout vinyl or rubber piece that's stuck onto the stuck onto the cap so first thing of those is the sharpness level relative sharpness level now if you look at the cap it's quite you know it's a reasonable shot but it's got compared to that it's a bit softer the all the texture and the outlines of this look a lot sharper than the cap so it stands out a little bit so for that i'm just going to go to filter blur and if you just need a little bit of blur on something you don't need to bother going to gaussian blur and playing with the controls just go to the general one here that says blur and that's just going to put a preset amount of blur to the image very small amount and for something like this we've just got to take it a tiny bit that's normally enough um, but as you can see, because we've got the smart objects on here, we made it a smart object, we can turn that on and off and we can do what we like. So that's the step one. Step two is address the fact that the white levels um, are wrong. So the highlight levels are wrong compared to the image. They're too much. So we're going to go Control or Command L directly on the layer for the design to bring up levels. Now this is not doing this as an adjustment layer. This is applying this directly to the to the layer itself. So what I'm going to do here is this bottom sort of black to white bar here, this gradient bar, I'm going to click on the white point far to the right and I'm going to bring that down slightly to the left. And I'm going to do it too much so you can see what it's doing at first if I keep going. So what that's doing, that's taking the whitest points of the image and it's just pushing them more and more towards grey and more and more towards black. So in other words, it's darkening down the lightest points in the image the more you move it across and so all i'm doing is i'm looking at the text that says shredded which is white and i prompted for a white cap so i don't really want the white of the design to be much brighter than anything else in the image that's supposed to be white because that's what makes it look a bit fake so i'm going to bring it in something like that just so that it's not quite as muted It just makes it a little less obvious. There you go. Okay, so that's the second step. Third step, we're going to give it that sort of subtle 3D look to the outside of this shape. So we're going to double click next to where it says layer one to go into our layer styles. I'm going to use bevel and emboss for this. Now I'm going to just reset these because I actually started on some settings that i had been using previously to test this. So I want to almost start from a neutral point. So let's say there's got nothing applied at the moment. For this kind of effect, I want inner bevel because I don't want it to go out onto the hat. I just want to um, affect the actual shape and almost 
Yeah, so if you put out a bevel, it would go onto the material of the hat, which wouldn't look right. So in a bevel, it's this would normally be on smooth, so I'm just going to keep it on that and just show you what happens. So I'm going to put the start to put the depth and size up, and you see how it's given like a like a 3D sort of beveled effect at the top. Now the angle is actually already defaulted to a pretty good angle here, but I'm looking at the light is coming from the top right hand side of the shot because you can see where well, you can see it on the hat where the, where the, the the light's hitting hopefully, but then you can also see where the shadow's being cast on the cap. It's it's you know it's going to that bottom right corner. So that's what we need to try and match with this. So the little highlight we're putting on the on what would be the the design, the little decal, is is also the highlight is coming is being hit from the top right. So we can set that by this angle, by this angle um, control here. You can just play around with it and get a different different kind of effect. Um, so I'm gonna do I'm gonna put the depth. See, so the more you put the depth, you can change the position of where that highlight is. So this is just a matter of taste and then size again, it's just it will just change the position and relative sort of height of the of the highlight. Now I just I'd want something like this, but I don't want it to be that strong. There's something like that. I think looks pretty good. It's like a subtle little 3D effect. Click OK. And to tie everything together, what I like doing, especially on any kind of AI image, um, is put a layer of grain or noise over the top of everything, it, especially if it's like quite a clean, smooth um, image like this. It just helps to tie things together. So that's very easy, and I'll show you the best way. So create a new layer by clicking on the blank layer icon. Hold down Shift and press F5 on your keyboard to bring up the fill dialog here. And we're going to change the fill type, the fill color to gray and just click OK. And then we're going to change the blend mode to soft light. And what that's going to do is it it will make the gray invisible because of that blending mode. So anything that's that neutral gray color won't appear. So now if we can put things like go to the filter menu and we'll add some noise to the image. This will now appear everywhere, but because it's applying that straight onto this gray layer, on the right blending mode, it means we can do things like turn it on and off or um, drop the opacity and things like that. So I'm going to click monochromatic because I don't want the noise to add any color. And this is very harsh for me. It's too much. So I'm going to drop the amount down and I just want to go for something quite subtle, but you don't want it looking crunchy or artificially pushed. So I'm just going to I'm going to go a little bit more than I normally would, just hoping that it's still going to be able to be caught in this video because YouTube compression will kind of destroy a lot of the subtle details. So if you can't see much of a change on the screen for that, I apologize because it's, you know, YouTube video thing. But in reality, that's kind of um, that's kind of making a nice difference to me. Um, one bonus thing I'll probably do to this just to add a bit more interest. Cause it's all very solid black at the moment. Either go into the levels that we did earlier and again, beauty of the smart object, look at what we can do. We can go all the way back down to that levels adjustment where we made, where we made the whites a little bit darker. We can go in and I'm just looking and maybe we can do the opposite with the blacks. So go to the black point and bring it up just a tiny bit. And the reason for this is in the real world, nothing like this is completely black or completely white. So if you've got anything like a graphic design element you're bringing in with a logo or anything, and it's got like a pure black background to it, that's extremely, that will always remain a little bit jarring. So doing this and just bringing it up, if I go too far, it'll sort of gray, but it's a good way to just, again, bring it into a bit more of the realm of reality because nothing is true black. Um, a hundred percent black. It just, especially on something like this. Just click OK. And there we've got our cap design, all generated within Photopea using a um, plugin, a free plugin. So this complete workflow is com absolutely free and um, pretty effective. 